part two, I'm going to be installing this Namira top end repair kit in this 07 YZ450F. I'm not one for unboxing videos, but holy hell, this is the cheap kit and I understand now why it's so expensive to buy this shit. Look at the packaging this stuff comes in. Ridiculous. There's the rings, the circlips, the wrist pin. Really? This is what it's all about? Just this forged piston here? Whatever. Don't get me wrong. It's probably pretty nice. It look, certainly looks good for... This is damn near 300 Canadian. So, uh, that's, that's quite a lot of dough for just a freaking piston kit. And I mean, it does come with, I did notice, valve seals. This guy here at my thumb, this is the exhaust header donut. Pretty sure the one below it, that blue one, uh, cam chain tensioner, gasket. Oh, and a shit ton of uh, Namira stickers for added horsepower. But anyway, this is what these kits look like, and this is what they come with. Before we get going too crazy throwing this thing in, always, always, always check your piston ring and gap before you commit to anything. This will help the longevity of the bike, and uh, it also helps to know if you're actually fixing uh, an issue. And uh, if you put the incorrect size piston in, you're going to be mad at yourself later. And to do that, it's very simple ring end gap is we're just measuring the, the gap when this spring is installed in the cylinder between the two ends now as you can see right at my finger here this one says first so this is the top ring and then the, there's a second compression ring so it says second this will have a different gap measurement than the the first then you go ahead and repeat the process for all the other rings the only one you can't check a gap on is this is the old one this is the oil scraper ring this corrugated piece but the two rings that go on the top and the bottom of this uh, you can measure a gap on them and there is a spec for them as well so uh, I've got the top ring here as you can see it says first on it the numbers and the manufacturing markings always face up and in the manual I'll post a, a picture of it For this particular bike, they want the ring gap measured 10 millimeters down from the, the top. So you just use, I'm using the old piston here. You could just use this to seat the ring down evenly. What does 10 millimeters look like? I don't speak French. Turns out way more. And anyway, I got my uh, caliper here and set to 10 millimeters. Really isn't much, so I went down too far. Some bikes, it'll be kind of like halfway down the bore they want it measured. I don't know why they always change their minds. They at the end of the day, they built the damn thing, they know better than us. We'll leave the ring high and then drag this around. This will push the ring down where I need it. Okay, and if you're not familiar with ring end gap, this gap right here we're measuring. You need to set a few of gauges to do that. I'll post the limits. It's, the gap's different for the first ring, the second ring, and the uh, oil. Next, put your rings on, and like always, the gaps you want kind of opposite each other on a lot of this stuff, but in the manual Yamaha actually puts a specific location they want each ring and gap to, to finish. So why don't you just follow their recommendations, because again, they know best, they built the bike. And then I go ahead and I install, you can see the circlip on the other side. Uh, Yamaha in the manual wants that guy with the opening straight down, but I don't really like that because that the one end is too close to the cutout, and uh, so I'm just going to put it in an opposite position. See this cutout window on this Namira piston on the bottom, whereas the stock Yamaha piston it doesn't have a cutout at all, hence why you would put the clip at the bottom. So if yours has a cutout window like this Namira, put the ring, uh, the the snap ring gap on the opposite side somewhere, and you got to get some cream cheese and lube the rings and the uh, piston skirt. Okay, and off camera, I apologize, but I deglazed the cylinder here just with my uh, my hone real quick. You're not looking to take material away. You're just looking to deglaze the shininess off the cylinder wall here and put in some very small cross hatching. And make sure you clean it out really well after you do that. I just use a rag and some uh, cream cheese and wipe it around until you get all the black shit off of it. Do it a few times and it should, the oil picks up all the, all the crap in the, in the uh, cross hatchings you just made. It should go without saying before I've even got to this stage, I've cleaned up all the 
gasket surfaces and make sure they're very clean. The head gasket surface, the bottom of this, the top of this, the bottom of this as well, along with on the bike itself, the crankcase needs to be cleaned. Here we are putting some Rotella cream cheese on the piston rings and a little bit on the skirt. Get her nice and lubed, it'll help the install and after initial startup. Put some on the upper connecting rod too. Just work it in there with your finger and then you can go ahead and put your piston in and make damn sure you put it the right way because you're going to again be mad at yourself if you don't, especially on this 5 valve Yamaha. It won't work too well with three uh, cutouts for the exhaust valves and uh, put some rags underneath the piston after you get the pin in because if you drop this circlip you're going to be in a world of hurt slide it in there again with the opening opposite the cutout if there is a cutout window and make damn sure it's engaged in the in the boss it's supposed to be in a pro tip oil up your lower uh, your cylinder base gasket because if you ever need to pull it off it won't stick as much and you won't be doing as much cleanup so it's just to help the next guy out Pour some cream cheese on the lower connecting rod bearing. The spike's been sitting a while. It needs a little extra oil. And then you're good to throw your cylinder on. This is kind of a balancing act. You're kind of juggling. You have to slide the chain guide through it along with the chain itself while squeezing the piston rings to fit in the cylinder. But take some time. You get it. It's, it's not too hard. Just have some patience. And once you get the chain through, it's a good idea to put, I just put a screwdriver through it so it doesn't fall back through, uh, down to the base. And then it's just a matter, like I said, of squeezing the rings evenly to get them in place. With a little bit of editing magic, this probably took me, I don't know, five minutes to get it to, to sit flush the way I wanted it to, but just take your time. It'll go. And there she be. Alright, next, got to clean up all the hold down bolts. We have to put some molybdenum disulfide grease on the threads and on the contact surfaces of each. You'll see the link here in a second regarding that. So just a little bit under the bolt head between the washer and the bolt head and some on the threads. Stuff I'm using is M77 grease. You can look it up. But Yamaha wants this special. It's dark in color, this molybdenum disulfide is what it's, uh, the, the compound's actually made of. Then you can put the head gasket in, and I forgot to show you off camera, but the forward chain guide I put in place after the cylinder was seated. And here I'm just spreading some cream cheese on the camshaft races. And once again, this is kind of just like a juggling act. You're trying to feed both can, plastic cam chain guides and the chain itself up through the cutout in the cylinder head. Once you do get it up through, put like a screwdriver or something through it once again. And you just slide everything down until the dowel pins line up themselves. And it's at this point I realized from taking it apart, the back right uh, bolt needs to be kind of half-ass installed as you're putting the head in. It won't, you can't feed it in, otherwise it hits the frame. So anyway, I had to pop the heads just back off slightly to twist it to get everything on. And here I am feeding through all four bolts after I got that finished and just sinking them down by hand just to where they bought them. Now these have a specific torque pattern. The first step is 22 foot-pounds, I believe, in a cross-sectional pattern. And then Yamaha wants you to back them off individually and re-grease them. Take, take them out completely, re-grease them, reinstall them to 17 foot-pounds, and then turn them 180 degrees stretch torque. So the, I'm just marking these two right now on the right-hand side of the bike. But what you can do here is just do 90 degree increments. Take the slop out of your ratchet, turn each bolt 90 degrees in uh, two steps. So you're, you're moving each one twice, and that'll equate to 180 degrees past the 17 foot-pounds the Yamaha wanted. So 
it's the stretch torque for these guys here. It's really not that complicated. You can use a marker to indicate 180 degrees if you want, or you could just use a ratchet like I'm doing here and don't let it click. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. You hopefully understand what I'm saying here, but. <laughs> Then remove the timing plugs off the left side of the bike and we're going to get ready to time up the, the cams. So turn it over by hand until you can see the, the marks. Yeah, that H looking one on the left, it's got to be between those hashes, that's the firing mark. So you just line up this notch in the uh, plug somewhere in between those two notches on that H looking thing on that flywheel. Before we get too ahead of ourselves, I forgot to put down the three bolts here. These are torqued to 7.2 foot-pounds, or around 84 and a half inch-pounds. They're not very tight. Then it doesn't really matter what cam you start with. I started with the exhaust here. With the engine at top dead center that we placed it in earlier, you just feed the cam in with the lobes facing forward. and the, There's one punch mark that should face straight up and the other should line up with the top of the cylinder head casting. And then do the same for the intake, and this is just a matter of trial and error, guys. Like, it's really, this took a little while, it took me two attempts to get it, but you'll get it eventually. And then you just remove your tensioner to d verify if it's lined up or not, because it will move once the tensioner is pulled. Okay, it took two tries, but I finally got it. There's that tick mark right there. That one's pointing more or less straight up. Intake cam, same thing in line with the casting in the cylinder head and uh, i didn't show the, this process but this is very critical you torque all these cam cap bolts down in a cross-sectional pattern and they go to uh, 7.2 foot pounds as well just like these so 7.2 foot pounds is 84.5 uh, inch pounds now we're good to throw the cover on put the plug back in the uh, cam chain tensioner see if she'll start. Okay, I skipped forward a few steps, but once you get the cylinder head cover on, it's pretty much you just bolt everything back together that you had apart. The water hose right here needs to go back on, the breather hose up on the top, and you just literally bolt everything back together the way you took it apart. Fill it with water and then uh, give it a run. So let's see how she did. After a few heat cycles, should go without saying, we're gonna go around the bike, look for any leaks, oil and water, pop off the water level when it's cooled down, obviously, but that's it, guys, and yeah, I recommend just doing a few heat cycles, take it easy on the bike for the first little while, and then uh, give it a thorough beat down. If it holds together, well, you must have done something right. Anyway, I hope people learned something out of this, and it's really not that bad of a job. Save yourself some money. Later.